All right, time to put the strands in. Put a little bit of grease on there. Just tap it around on his blinds a little bit. And uh, just so it helps it out, okay? And that's it. Wipe off the excess. All right, now I'm gonna put it up in there. <clears throat> and uh, good luck. Get the trans up there. Get it as level as complete can be. You know, equally. Not like this, not like that. And get it close. Get it seven eighths deep. And I'll swivel ratchet. And turn the crank. And keep uh, applying pressure on the trans towards the engine. As long as you keep on giving it looking like it's lined up, you can stick that big bolt in there. Get it started by a couple threads. Same thing at the back one. Do not put, do not tighten it up with a wrench. Just get it started. Run up the slack. Make sure it's even. Keep turning the crank. Keep pushing the trans towards the engine. And it will go. And once it goes up, then you can snug up your bolts and then get all the other ones started and tighten the ones up on the bottom. Got all my trans bolts tight on the bottom. Now, as long as you got the rack, all the rack bolts loose, the two over there, this will move pretty good. So now you can fish that uh, lower control arm bracket in there. Okay, when you put that control arm in, make sure you look at the, uh, the power steering rack. The steering rack has two dowel, dowels protruding through the bottom that goes in through that bracket. Line them up in there, and then these, the ones that go into the frame will line up. And just work your way around on all the bolts and do your stabilizer ones last. And make sure you tighten them up so the indentation is, don't show no clean surface, okay? Tighten them up. Go to the other side and tighten that side up also. And uh, that'll complete your lower control arm on this side and your your, your uh, subframe is tightened up, okay? So now the next you can do is work on your half shafts and your, your little torque arm. All right, <clears throat> I did my lower torque arm. Now I lowered it down onto a block of wood and jacked the trans up and I put my trans mount on. I just didn't like it hanging on that, on this thing for very long because I'm done for today. All right, so I got that on there. That's where we're at now. Five-wheel bolts are M12s. Mark the bottom. Bottom of it. This is the bottom. You'll mark the bottom so you can put it back up there directly the same. You'll have to pry the flywheel off of there from right to left and oil leaking out of the back. Looks like the oil is coming from the back of it. Got a little bit up there on top. But mainly around here. All right, so due to rear main, we gotta remove all these uh, Torx bolts. The Torx bolts were T30s, remove them, pry this cover off, it's held on with silicone, and the rear, the rear main seal will be probably stuck to the back of the crank, just like this one was. Man, what a, what a professional seal here, huh? Wow. All right, seal's out. Let it drain for a while. And uh, she might even have to drain the oil because it might be it might be high. That might be why it keeps on dripping out. So anyway, you need to clean that surface up and get it all cleaned up and wipe off around the crank. Make sure there's no big uh, ridge line or anything or varnished deposits. It'll find sandpaper, emery cloth, go all around, clean it up, put some grease around your crank, 
Put some silicone on there and put your new seal and plate on there. But we might have to drain some oil out. When you're removing this lower control arm assembly, you get the trans out. There's this bracket right here for wire harness. Plastic, it's got a 10 millimeter going to the top, going straight down into that bracket for the control arm. All right, after you clean this surface up, and you put some memory cloth on the side of your crankshaft, a little bit, clean it up a little bit. Clean it all up with some brake clean. Don't be spraying it in there. Wipe it on there and then wipe the crank and then put a little fine, a little bit of grease around on the crank on the seal surface. And be careful not to get any grease around on the block. So now put some silicone inside your little grooves on your oil seal housing. And don't cake it on too thick because you don't want to be pushing it towards the seal. So just put it inside that groove, nice quarter inch bead all the way around. And then get it up here and line it up with your tool that's on the seal. And then eyeball these two holes through here and just you can have two hands, one here and one there, and just push it on in one style of motion. Boom. Okay, and then get a couple bolts started. Get them all started, snug them up. And then you want to torque them to 10 foot pounds. Okay, and then you want to let that dry. I mean, it'll probably be dry and cured before you put the trans in, but it should cure at least 24 hours. Okay, now that you got it torqued, it's all set. And that's it for your rear main seal. You might want to just put just a little bit of wheel bearing grease on this pilot bearing. Just a little bit, okay? Okay, <clears throat> put that cover back on now if you took it off i'm sure you did make sure you tuck it underneath here first and then put just put them in your uh dowels okay make sure they're both in and not twisted or anything so now you can put your flywheel on okay flywheel up there put a little bit of uh loctite on your threads and your bolts Get them all started, snug them up, and then you want to tor torque them to 65 foot-pounds. And that's it. Now you're ready to put the trans up there. Okay, so that's where we're at now. Get yourself a decent punch. Put a nice, clean, crisp edge on it. You want to feel the race, you'll feel an edge on it. You can feel that one right here. There's an edge. If you go on the other one, you'll feel it there. So you want to put that punch right on that edge of that race and give it a smack this direction and then a smack that direction, okay? Just keep doing that back and forth till it fully comes out, all right? Okay, since we got it down and we put that trans mount in, might as well put the trans bell housing bolts in. Remember the two on the top and then one that goes inside the starter hole. And these are 18s, not 19s. Next, find the shift cable, stick it through the hole. As you're pulling it through the hole, align it up inside here for the shifter also. And then pull on it and push on it and get your clip lined up in there in this little slot and then tap on it with a hammer little popping hammer and now you can put in your little bolt for your shifter you remember I said little bolt <laughs> it's short <clears throat> okay put that heater hose on it goes on down below here push it on in put the clamp on and you want to get your wire harness bracket onto this these two studs get your two nuts started get your blow gun over here to your trans connector blow it out a little bit and then spray some uh, dialetic spray in there okay or some contact cleaner if you got it dialetic spray is pretty good and you just blow out the excess with your blow gun and get it started. The arrow's kind of pointing towards the side of the bolt. Push it in there. Grab hold of this little lever. 
turn it to the clips, it clips, locked in place and we're good, okay? And then next be your starter. Okay, starter is in, 16, 5 eighths, tighten them up and the bottom one had the stud, put the ground on the stud, tighten it up with a 13 millimeter nut, put the cables on the solenoid, 13 millimeter nut, and push on connector. All right. So then next, and pretty much, pretty much that's it. This stuff over here is for the uh, water pump. So I'm trying to keep things separate. All right. So anyway, now we're gonna raise it up and finish underneath. Okay. Lamp the right half shaft and get all the bolts started, and make sure you put these little. I don't know what they are, retainer, dinies, put them in the right spot, okay? Get them all started, and then you can snug them up all the way around and then tighten them up. Okay, I got all the bolts started for the axle shaft. Remember, it's an M10. Use the long extensions, two of them, and go through the wheel well housing. Snug them up and then tighten them up. I put my wheel studs in there, a couple of them, so I can turn it. Get the idea? Hmm, driver's side, you need to get that piece of wood out of there, so you stick a flat blade screwdriver inside here. So you can pull against the rotor. And the block falls out. Now you need to do is add your bar joint to your control arm and push your uh, half shaft inside the trans part. And then you can put your nuts on your lower bar joint. Lower ball joint nuts, 16 or 5 eighths. Tie rod end nut, 18 millimeter. Tighten them up. Next, get your half shaft up in there and get all your bolts started. Next, to put the inner fender wheel well in. All right. All right, next is cooling hoses. Put your clips in. Okay, and this is the lower one. And you gotta plug that in also. Make sure your O rings are in there, make sure they're clean. They give us new ones with the pump. I don't know if I'm gonna trust it. Don't forget to put that screw in that bracket because that holds the lower hose. Okay, and put the lower hose on there. Goes on to the lower part of the water pump. Connect your connector on the lower hose and line up your notches and push it on there till you hear it clip and then give it a good pull on a couple times, see if it comes off. And then actually go up to the water pump one and make sure you push it on there and you hear it clipping also. For the upper one, you got two different size clips. Make sure you clip them in like that. And this is the small one over here. Okay. Clip it in that way. All right. Okay. Radiator hoses are clipped on. I heard them click. I pulled on, then they come off. Make sure you put this one on next. And don't forget about that piece with that little temp sensor inside of it that goes on that hose. And that one takes a clip also. Put the sensor in this end first and push this end on second. Make sure it's aligned up perfectly because in this one, it has a little indentation for a tit for that end of that sensor to go inside of. So if you don't get it inside that hole in here, you're never going to get it on there all the way. So once you got it correctly on there, you can be able to push this in there and you'll be able to see around the sides of these slits that it's open so then you can push the clip in 
right? If you can't push the clip in easily, then stop. Take it apart and make sure you didn't break anything and make sure you be careful. And look at that inside there, get the idea of what I'm talking about, about the hole, okay? Next is the intake tube for the intercooler. Intercooler, throttle body. Make sure you put the clip back in and intercooler. Make sure you put the clip in properly, okay? All right, get it all the way up to the throttle body. Don't have to be on, just get it underneath. And you gotta twist it to get it up in there because you got two of those with the bolts on them. They go into the side of the block. There's one here and there's one above that other hose. So now you can push that hose on and get it on and plug the sensor in. Also, it's in between those two bolts. Okay, this one's on on the lower. So I'm gonna go do the throttle body and then I can line up my bolts and tighten them up. All right, got the throttle body clamped tight. That was a seven millimeter. And there's my bolt, you see it? And you gotta line it up into the block for the hole for it. So I gotta get my, my uh, socket on there and get it ready. I'm gonna put the socket on there with an air ratchet and I'm gonna pick up with my left hand and pick up on the two and then use the ratchet with my right hand. Okay, got the bottom one. This is that temp valve that goes in that hose. I found this spring. There's a spring that goes like this. Okay. All right. So now we're gonna stick it in here first. And the end of that thing has to go in that little tit hole down inside there, okay? Whatever you do, <clears throat> don't take that coolant line apart from right here. Cause there's a thermal valve in there and a spring. It goes to the uh, trans cooler. So, <clears throat> all right, now you can put the breather tube on, goes to the top of the valve cover to the intake. And now you can put the battery box in. Remember it weasels back underneath around here. And you gotta put the screws in for that, the bolts. If you're wondering about that nipple, if you look down inside of it, it's full of dirt. I don't think it goes to anything and I don't remember taking anything off of it. Next, put the battery in, hook your cables up, hook up your, uh, <clears throat> put your panel in on the side, remember it clips in on the sides, and then put your hole down in there and tighten it up. All right, put your lower air cleaner box in there. There's a tube, stick it down inside that circle. It goes inside the fender. It fits into the grommets and you got a bolt right here to tighten up. And you can put your upper air filter housing in with your air cleaner. And then you put your little snorkel on with the little, two little screws for that. Put your air cleaner in, your upper cover. Don't forget your big clamp there. Plug in your mass airflow sensor, tighten up all your little screws. And on this, this was open, so don't worry about that. Put your engine cover back on. And uh, battery's connected, get some cooling in it. You can start it up, let it run, see how it goes. If it goes good. Double check for coolant leaks, double check for transfluid leaks. Other than that, if I help to do the uh, water pump on this vehicle, that's great. If I help to do the transmission rear main seal on this vehicle, that's great. Hopefully you can help me by subscribing to me. I have uh, headlight bulbs to do turn signal bulbs to do that's why I didn't fully tighten it because they gave me the wrong bulbs. Well I thank you very much. Okay. Bye.